All right, ready? All right, ready? So Proverbs 30, all right? So first and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash. All right, so um, this was an interesting subject that I wanted to bring out because uh, what we find when we look into Paul's writings, a lot of people get confused. A lot of people get confused with his writings. What is he saying? He's going against the Most High. He's going against Yahweh Shai. He's going against everything that the Bible is saying. He's a Roman. He's not an Israelite. So, um, you know, to the power of the Most High, we're going to gain some understanding today on Romans 14, which is a very uh, uh, misunderstood uh, uh, chapter. A misunderstood book, for that matter, you know. Shalom, shalom, makim. So, um, what we want to do today is give you a basis of the context of that uh, uh, chapter, man. All right. We don't want to uh, leave no stone unturned, man. All right. Because what brothers do is they grab a uh, 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 a comment that some brother made, so he. See, he's going against Torah. Then you read Paul with no understanding, and guess what? You think he's going against Torah. Next thing you know, you're going against the whole New Testament. So I want to be very, 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 very clear, and I can't be more clearer than this. Paul gave absolutely no contradiction to the Bible, to what the Most High God said or what Christ said. He did everything in alignment to what he was commanded to do. As a matter of fact, he helped us understand more because he witnessed Yahweh Shai. He witnessed his power. He witnessed his wisdom. As a matter of fact, let's get into it. Let's start the scriptures, all right? So we're going to start off with the book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 5. Azariah, you got it? We in Proverbs 30. In chapter 5, what does that say? So, book of Proverbs, let me go there with you. Okay, so go ahead, book of Proverbs, go ahead. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. Stop. Read it again. Every, every, Stop. Every word of the Most High God is what? Pure. Is what? Pure. Pure. Now, when something's pure, it means it's not tainted. It doesn't have uh, uh, other e elements inside of it to make it unpure. Right? Read it again. Every word of God is pure. Every word of the Most High God is pure. Read. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. So, us understanding that the scriptures of the Most High God is pure... How is it that Paul is defiling it? How come we have so much confusion when it comes to Paul? How come when we go to Paul, now everything else has changed? So I, 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 what I read was, and this was on a post regarding Romans 14, was that, well, Paul's a false prophet. He went against what Christ said. He went against what God said. All right, so let's grab the understanding. So before we do that, this is uh this is a bit of scriptures that we're gonna grab. So Second Peter's, let's go to Second. As a matter of fact, Elijah, give me Second Peter's, three and seventeen. So Peter, who walked with Paul, who walked with Yahweh Shai, who walked with the Most High, said this about our beloved brother Paul. All right. So give me 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 17, please. Go ahead. 2 Peter 2 Peter 3 and 17. Uh-huh. Ye therefore be be loved seeing ye know these things before also, like a 15. Second Peter 
3.15 and account that the long suffering of our Paul and in account that the long suffering of our Lord read our Lord is salvation uh -huh. even as our beloved brother Paul even as our beloved brother Paul read also according to the wisdom wisdom given unto him so he was given wisdom so he wasn't a false prophet according to Peter as a matter of fact Peter said that the wisdom was given to him and who gives wisdom brothers the most high right read given unto him has hath written unto you have written unto you read on and also in all Epistles. epistles now when it says epistles epistles are letters that's what paul was writing letters all right read speaking in them of these things mm -hmm. in which are some things hard to be understood hard to be understood all right there are some things that paul said that were hard to be understood all right read which are some things hard to be Wait, which they are 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 unlearned and unstable which they that are unlearned and unstable rest meaning they wrestle unstable unlearned so we're going to grab a, a, a couple of key factors here unstable and unlearned how do you become learned and how do you get a good understanding that's the question what gives us a good understanding of the scriptures? Y'all know this? What scripture? Shalom, shalom. You know this? Psalms 111 and verse 10. Now, Psalms 111 and verse 10. Let's see what it says regarding the understanding and how we get a good understanding. So for us to truly understand Paul, what do we got to do? So Psalms 111 and verse 10. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read. And a, a, good understanding. a good what? A good, understanding. a good understanding. Read. All they that do his commandments. All they that do his commandments. So if you're following the laws, if you're Fearing the Most High God, the way you're supposed to fear him. Not fear him like a gun in your face, but fear him like the sun. Like you know it's there and it's powerful. And you're going to abide to what it does. But you know it could destroy you. But you know it could also give you nourishment at the same time. That's fearing the Most High God. Understanding his power and understanding his ways and his ways are what keeping us safe when we abide in his word that's how we gain understanding that's the fear of the most high god that's what we're supposed to do and that's what yasharala is lacking and has always lacked and will always like until the most high god's son comes and gets our asses straight Salaki. all right so go back so now let's get into it, all right? Give me Romans 14 and 1, please. So now we're going to go to Romans 14 and 1. Now we're going to, again, grab the understanding here. You cannot dismiss Paul without being obedient. That It doesn't work that way. You have to be obedient. Now, I, I, I give this, uh, this testimony a lot, but when I first came into the truth, I didn't know nothing about no Bible. This is my first Bible. This is my first Bible. My whole life. Right? So when I read Paul and I really started to get into him, to be honest with you, I hated Paul. I hated his writings. I was like, it's so much confusion. But check this out. Once you start understanding more, once you start walking in the ways of the Most High, you realize how powerful and how Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai used Paul so much. And what a beautiful spirit the brother had. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Benyamim. All right. 
he loved his his nation and he loved the most high god and he loved uh uh yahweh shai all right he loved them he was not a false prophet all right so let's get into it give me romans 14 and 1 so go ahead azariah let me get 14 and 1. Uh huh. Stop. So, when we're reading Paul, you have to understand reading context. You cannot grab one verse from Paul and say this is what he means. That's the problem with Christianity. You grab one little verse and say that's what it means. You might as well wear a shirt that says John three sixteen, and that's all you saying John three sixteen. But we know that there's a deep understanding. When it comes to the scriptures, and there's way more scriptures than that. But when you're reading Paul, you, you cannot grab one scripture and say, this is what he means. That's what happens when we're reading here in, in Romans 14. All right, go ahead. Doubtful. Disputations, meaning him that is weak. Receive ye, all right, but not unto doubtful, all right, distributions. All right, so now from there, give me the book of Second Timothy's, chapter 2 and verse 24. All right, so now what does it mean when he says that who is weak? What does it mean when he says a, a, a receive him? What are they talking about here? All right. So give me uh give me that second Timothy's two and twenty-four. As a uh, as Elijah, as a matter of fact, you give me first Corinthians eight and twelve. And I want you both to read that. Second Timothy's two and twenty-four. First Corinthians eight and twelve. So go ahead, read that. Give me Timothy's. This is the book of this is the book of Second Timothy, chapter two, verse twenty-four. Uh-huh. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. Mm -hmm. Apt to each patient. Apt to each patient. Read. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. So when it says receive him who is weak, that's the type of spirit we're supposed to have. Read, read 24 again, please. And, my, and, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. So the servant of the Lord must not strive, strive meaning argumentative being combative read go ahead and the servant of the lord must not strive be gentle unto all men read apt to teach patient be patient and we did we and if and let me tell you paul had a lot of patience all right we have to de demonstrate that so go back to romans 1 and or so like 14 and 1 please we're going to keep going back to romans 14. so go ahead romans 14 and 1. so stop him that is weak in faith read All right, so it says, him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful distributions, meaning not, not to, to, you know, in a combative way. So 2 Timothy's 2 and 24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be patient and gentle to all men, apt to teach patient so when we're talking about receiving him receive him that is weak in faith all right who doesn't understand man you know i, I, I read a brother i um i read a brother's post today that a new brother asked him uh does lamb taste like pork why because the brother is still he's still trying to take those worldly thoughts those worldly actions out of his mind so what is it what is he he is weak in the faith. It doesn't mean that he's bad or he's good. It means that he's learning, right? So we have to be gentle with him. 
We cannot strive. Brother, what do you mean? You crazy, man. What you talking about, you poor? We, no, that's not the way we're supposed to do it. We're supposed to be gentle, patient. All right? You understand? All right? So you got that First Corinthians? Yeah. First Corinthians 1, uh, sorry, First Corinthians 8 and 12. Go ahead. First Corinthians 8 and 12. Yep. But when ye sin so against the brethren mm -hmm. and with their weak consent, ye sin against Christ. I'm going to read it. It says, but when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. You see that? So what does that mean? What does that mean? When you wound the weak conscience, right? What does that mean? That means talk down to them, right? Make them feel a certain way. What does the scripture say? The scripture says that we're going to fall seven times, that a righteous man falls seven times, right? But we're going to fall, but we got to get back up. I didn't know I, I couldn't I couldn't go to this place. I, I didn't know that I couldn't wear this type of mixed fabric. I didn't have the true understanding of the Sabbath, right? So if we were to, you know, uh, uh, hurt a brother like that, right? And tell him, you know what, uh, uh, brother, what you doing? You crazy, man. You got to keep the Sabbath day. What's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? And him not really understanding how to keep it. We're not, we're not being compassionate. We're not being patient with this brother like the scriptures say so. Okay, y'all understand? So much so, let, read that again. Read that again. Read 12 again, please. But when ye sin so against the brethren. When ye sin so against the brethren, read. And wound their weak conscience. conscience. And and wound their weak conscience, right? That's the point. Wounding their weak conscience. Brother, you look kind of mixed, man. You sure you uh from the tribe of Israel? Bro, like, <laughs> brothers, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you know? You have to test the spirit. But you can't test the spirit by just calling the brother out like that. Destroying his spirit. You can't do that. The scripture says you need to be patient and gentle toward that spirit. Nurture it. That's something we don't know how to do in Israel. We don't know how to nurture each other's spirit. So we we, we seek it elsewhere, man. Right? Con, 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 exactly. The five fruits of the spirit, man. Can nothing go against that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shalom, shalom. Con, con, all praises. So uh, go back to Romans, please. Romans 14. Give me one again, please. Uh huh. Him that is weak in the in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubt for disputations. Disputations. Read two. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Stop. For one will believe it that he may eat all things. Read. Another who is weak, who is weak, eateth herbs. So herbs. He when he means herbs, he means vegetables, right? So like a vegan and a one who was a meat eater, right? So let's grab the proper condos because a, a, what is a Christian going to do here? See, you could eat all things, brother. Paul's saying it, all things. All right, so go ahead. Give me uh, First Timothy's. Remember, we're going to go back to Romans, all right? Come on, follow along. We're in First Timothy's. Let's go. First Timothy's 4. We're going to start out verse 1. And this is another scripture they love to go to. All right? They love to go through this scripture. You got it? Go ahead. First Timothy's uh, 4 and 1. So some shall depart from the faith in the latter times. Read. Giving heed to seducing spirits. 
given he taken taken uh the ear to seducing spirits we see that all day every day all right seducing spirits there's a lot of them around all right go ahead doctrines, are devils. doctrines of what devils. doctrines of devils okay read read two Speaking lies and hypocrisy. 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 Yeah. Having their conscience, conscience seared with a, a hot iron. So that goes a uh, double fold, right? So like brothers who are so made up in their mind, there is nothing that you're going to say or show them to change their mind. There is nothing you're going to do. It's sheared with a hot iron, okay? Read on. So this is an issue that Paul was going through. A let in his letter, he wrote this. This is a response. Okay, so it was forbidding to marry. Read. And commanding to abstain for meats. What does that mean? Commanding to abstain for meats. So stop. All right, so you you still you still, you hold in Romans four fourteen. So remember, put your finger on it because we're going back to it. So Romans fourteen, read verse two, and, and you stay there in Timothy's. Okay, read that. For one believeth that he may eat all things. One believes he can eat all things. Read. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Read what you got again. Read, uh, what was that? Um, three, go ahead. Uh huh. Commanding to abstain from meats, meaning they were, they were, this is an issue he was having. One brother was saying, I don't want to eat any meat. We, we can't eat meats. We got to go back to the way, uh, uh, Adam used to live. He never ate any meat. This brother saying, Well, in Leviticus, the, the 11th chapter, it says the meat that we can eat. So if I want a big bull and I want to eat it, I can eat it. And you're like, nah, man, I like my salary. I like my carrots. I like my potatoes. But no meat. I like to be vegan. Right? <laughs> they didn't say that. But that's what, you know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what was happening. So when it says abstain from eating meats, meaning they were commanding each other not to eat meat. Okay? You understand? You understand? Yeah. I need you to really get this part because this is where it hits home. All right? So go ahead. Finish that off. Azariah, go ahead. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving. So with God created to receive by thanksgiving, so a Christian will stop there and say, you see, you can eat whatever you want just as long as you give thanks. Right? So go ahead. Stop. For them that believe and know the truth. What is the truth? What's yeah, you know I want a scripture. First John, five and three. First John 5 and 3. That's not the truth, but that's a good scripture. But I won't accept that one. I'm looking for another one. Give me what? 119 and 142. The law is the truth, right? From so read that part again. For abstaining from eating meats, right? Which God created to be received with thanks, giving of them which believe and know the truth. So the truth is what? Get if get, get uh, so you know what? Get it. Because how do we how do we how do we how do we respond we respond with scripture right so go ahead and get uh, Psalms one nineteen and one forty two. What is the truth? And then hold what you got. Give me John seventeen and seventeen. John seventeen and seventeen. Saint John. You got it? Yeah, Psalms 142. What does that say? Uh, 
um, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. Read what you got. Thy truth, read. Thy word. Thy what? Thy word is thy truth. Thy word is the truth. Thy word is the truth. Okay, you understand? Okay. So far, I don't know about y'all, but Romans fourteen ain't talking about you eating pork, is it? I didn't see anywhere in there. Right. Exactly. For those who know the truth, right? And what's the truth? What's the truth? Uh, Psalms 118 and 118. You can look at it. You well, might as well look well, at it. Too. Yeah. He's like, uh, what are, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all good? Yes. All right, con. Con, con, con. Let's go back to Romans, man. So now we're grabbing a, a, a better understanding of Romans 14. Because a Christian will grab, as a matter of fact, there's some uh, Israelites who will grab Romans 14 and say, well, you see, we can eat everything we want. All right, so go ahead. Romans 14, we're at verse 2. Go ahead. Romans 14 and verse. Give me two. Verse 2. As a matter of fact, give me three. What does that mean? So remember, remember, you were a vegan, right? And you ate meat, right? Uh -huh. So read, read that part again. Let not him that eateth. Let not him, him that eateth. Read. Despise him. Despise him that what? That eateth not. That eateth not. You don't eat meat, right? You're the vegan guy, right? <laughs> and this is the meat eater guy, right? So what does it say? Read it again. Shalom, shalom. Let not So he can't despise you for eating not. Read. And let not him which eateth not. And him that eateth not, that which is you, vegan guy. Read. Veganator. Judge him that eateth. Judge him that eateth. So you can't do the same thing for him eating meat. Read on. For God has received him. Who are thou that judges another man? Servant uh -huh. to his own master, he standeth or falleth. Nay, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Right. So, meaning what? That who are you to judge the servant of the Most High? Right. We always bring up the 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 example of David. Remember when when King David uh, ripped Saul's uh, oh, yeah. garment. Remember that? Yeah. And, and he said what? What did he say? No, he didn't go to people. He, he showed Saul. Oh, he said, I could have killed you. He said, I could have. He showed him the, the, the piece of the garment missing, missing from his garment. saying, look, I could have killed you. But I didn't want to kill the Most High God's anointed. Right? So this is saying the same thing. Why are we judging that? Again, I don't see where pork is mentioned here. I don't see where it says we can eat whatever we want. It doesn't say that. All right? Give me... Um, so from there. 